Hello everyone, it's been a while. Today I'm going to show you how to implement dark mode toggling in Next.js app router with Material UI. So you can see over here when we click on this um, toggle theme, our um, application toggles to light or dark, dark mode depending on the mode that is currently active. So actually, with the current solution online, um, implementing it with uh, Material UI, it has an issue of you are flickering when you are in dark mode and you refresh the screen. So Material UI came up with a solution of CSS variable. So with CSS variable, you get to implement dark mode toggling in, in, in Next.js without um, flickering or without UI flickering. So today I'm going to show you exactly how to implement that. So let me briefly show you the demo of our application. So you can see our application over here. When I click on this, it, it turns to light. And um, when I refresh the page, it's still light. And when I click on here, it still toggles to dark. And if I refresh, there is no more flickering like the existing solutions. And if, for instance, I open this application in another tab, in another tab over here, and I toggle this thing to light, whichever tab that I open the application, it will be toggled to light as well. And if I, in any of these tabs, if I toggle to dark, it will as well toggle in the other tab as well. So if you want to see how we are going to implement this in Next.js app router um, using Material UI with CSS variables, stay tuned to the end of this tutorial. So back here in our, on our context top, so let's click on this terminal to open open a terminal on your own and app, and then let's zoom it. So I'm going to sit into YouTube. I already have my folder where I drop my YouTube videos. So we are going to create an Next.js application. In order to do that, let's navigate to the browser and um, and then research for Next.js. So we check the Next.js installation page, and you can see the commands over here for bootstrapping our Next.js application. So let's go ahead and paste it over there. But I don't want to use the latest version of Next.js. I want to use 14.2.16. And the name of our app should be Next.js-mui-theme. So let's um, wait for Re to create our app. Right, so we need to um, answer some simple questions um, like, do we want to use TypeScript? Yes, didn't yes. And uh, Tailwind CSS, no. And source directory, yes. App router, yes. And then default alias, yes. So we can have an um, first slash asterisk over there. And um, let's wait for our application to create. All right, since our application has created, let's go ahead and then um, open it in our VS Code or our coding environment of our choice. So I will actually cd into nextjs-mui-thing, that is the name of the app. And then I will type this command, leave space, code dots, and then hit enter. So I've opened this application in my VS Code right here. So let's go ahead and then and, uh, run this application by opening the inbuilt terminal. So npm run dev, we start the application and then uh, listening on port 3000. So let's open another terminal. We have to install some packages. So, and um, we have to first of all configure MUI with an uh, So let's type an MUI and go to installation. From the installation over here, we need to copy this command and then uh, navigate back and paste. We also need to actually install Roboto font. So let's copy that as well and paste. And uh, we need to copy this file, so our entry file. So let's copy that and navigate, open the source directory, open app, and um, open a layout of CSS. So let's go ahead and uh, paste this, what we have just copied, and uh, remove some of these because we don't need them. We let's remove this one as well. So we also need to configure to add a prop to this HTML tag known as suppress hydration warning. So and um, let's get back here. So since uh, we also want to make use of material icons, so material UI icons, um, let's go ahead and then paste this command as well. And then in order to do that, we need to actually import this style in our project. So let's go to our file globals.css. We will have to remove some of these and um, CSS styles. So let's um, remove these ones. So we don't need them. So in order to import this, we need to type at import. So it will come with an uh, access to for the URL. We drop the URL that we just copied. The next step over here is to set up our MUI with uh, Next.js. So let's type MUI Next.js. So and then go to the integration page. When we go over there, we are asked to install these packages. We have already installed them, but let's do it again. And um, we also need to import this in our in our app layout tss file so let's go to our app layer tss file let's import it down here so after that we need to wrap our application with that so inside the body we need to wrap our application over here so um, 
let's close it like this then we need we also need to pass an option over here so let's call option and it's going to be an object and we call it enable css layer let's set it to false the next step is to create our own theme so um, in order to do that inside the source directory let's go ahead and create two directories no one known as components and another one known as context so inside the context let's create a file known as app theme context.tss so app theme context.tss first of all we call use client at the top and um, we will create a context so let's call it an app theme app theme context context is equal to we make use of create context we add create context so this one over here for now let the context be null the next step is to create a provider so const app theme provider is equal to it's going to be a function that will take props of any for now and it will actually um return let's create a theme so const theme is equal to um use memo so that it can memorize our value and inside it we are going to inside it we are going to return responsive we want to create responsive font sizes for material ui and inside it we can now create the theme even this one will be imported from what from material ui so it's going to be a function that will take an object so in order to enable dark mode toggling in our next next application we have to make use of and css variables so let's do a quick search so when you come to the browser over here and you search for MUI and CSS variables, you will be taken to this documentation. And over here, you can go through the documentation. The advantage, you can check the advantages of using a CSS variables. Say it lets you prevent dark mode SS flickering and then the rest. So let's go to basic usage. And one of the basic usage is us to create a theme and pass these CSS variables through. So and um, so let's do that. So over here, we have to call CSS variables as one of the options. And inside it, let's call and color skin select selector. And then let's call give it um, a class. We want it to be a class. And over here again, we call and disable color skin. Let's pass it through. The next step is for us to create a palette that will be used throughout our application. And over here, our palette is going to be primary, and we want to have to specify the primary color. So main over here. And then for the sake of this application, let's change our app and default color to 10, 18, 42. So, and we also need to specify the contrast text. This one is not required, but then we can just and um, we may just want to have a white color over there since we're, we may be using a dark blue so this one should be secondary color and as well the secondary color we want to have a 27 over here and um 59 59 111 so the next step after the palette configuration we also need to configure our color schemes so these color schemes is the one that we define our light mode and our dark mode color so as for the light we will then uh, have a light and specify the palette and inside the palette we also want to specify primary and inside the primary we want to specify main and the main over here is going to be the same thing with this so we can just go ahead and do the same configuration for dark theme so if it is in dark we want to have a palette and uh, like that so let's copy the same thing and take it down but we change the primary over here okay this, so you can then um, leave it like this so we copy the same thing down here in the dark the dark mode so you can go ahead and configure this to match your own application the way you want it to be so but for the sake of this story i'm going to leave it like that so the next step for us over here is to actually um uh, return this and uh, app context so it's a, it's a component so app thing context dot um, provider for now the value is null so let's pass the value as null and it's going to wrap our application so inside this we are going to have a theme provider for material ui so theme provider for material ui and theme provider will be asking for theme so we are going to go ahead and pass this theme that we created here this theme variable that we have created here and the next thing is let's disable transition or change this optional so and inside it we have to call css baseline so on this we reset our style to actually display properly on across all devices so we enable color scheme and Below it, below this CSS baseline, we are going to have um, props to our children. So all the children that we pass to this um, custom and uh, theme provider, this um, these things, this thing will be applied to the component. So after we are done with that, we need to actually return and export this component to be used. So export default 
um, app thing provider so we may also want to use the app thing context so export constant use app in context is equal to it's going to be a function that we return use context from react use context from react and we pass the app thing context that we created at the top here this one Another step is if we are dealing with um, if we are actually dealing with TypeScript, we need to import um, these types in order to use CSS variables. So at the top over here, just copy that code and import it at the top over here. So after we are done with this, we actually have to go back to CSS to the layer.txs file in the app directory to configure our application. When you come back to this documentation, you can see the Next.js app router set up over here. So we need to actually import this component. So copy the component and um, import it over here at the top. And we need to actually call the component. So, and um, before the children inside this, so inside this, we need to actually call the app theme provider. So app theme provider from our context. And inside the app theme provider, we have to call this component that we just imported at the top over there, this one in its color scheme. So, and the children is gonna go inside app theme provider. So let's go ahead and, and format this page. So, and then everything looks great. So we may decide to, we can define the default theme over or the default mode over here. So you can call default mode over here. And then if you hold your control and press space bar, you will see this um, default mode. So it can be system dark or light. So by default is a system. So if you define it, the default mode over here, you have to go back to your context as well and define the default mode on this theme provider as well as a system. So it is up to you. So, but for now, let's leave it as the, the way it is. So we have defined our, we have configured our app to actually use um, themes, these and CSS variables. So the next step for us is to go ahead and um, use some components in this, um, our application. So inside our components directory, let's go ahead and create some files. First of all, we create in this .css file, .css file. Then we create another component known as homepage, homepage.css file. We create another component known as media card, media card.tss we create another component known as main navbar.tss so and then inside the main navbar.tss let's go to mui documentation and get some component back here in the browser and under the installation let's go under component and then search for abba so inside the abba i want to make use of this one over here so let's copy the code and take it back so since we made use of a use state let's specify that this component is a client component by typing this statement to use clients at the top over there. So, and we will, we will also change the name to main navbar, main navbar, and we export the main navbar as well. So, and we want to change this from position static to actually position fixed. And um, we want to export this component. So, here just called export default as a main navbar from what main navbar. So this will prevent us from having a long import. So if you want to make use of this, our main navbar components, we will go to app that tree inside the layout. We want it to be before the children. So let's go ahead over here and have our main navbar here and then import it from components. So you can see it over here. So let's save everything and check it out in the browser and see. So our project is still running. So if we go back to the browser and then uh, we visit localhost 3000, we should be able to see our application up and running. So you can see our application up and running over here. The theme is the theme has and uh, the application has picked the default and system mode. And then you can see our navbar over here. So let's go ahead and remove this default and element over here and add our default uh, add our element. So in order to do that, go back to MUI again and let's search for card. And then on that card, let's look for this uh, media card. We want to display some images and text within our application. So we go back over here inside our component directory, inside the media card, we will specify use client at the top because it's gonna be a client component and paste this code. So, and over here, we want our card to take um, a prop. So the prop is gonna be an item and the item is gonna have an ID of string and it's gonna have a title of string. It is also going to have an SRC, that is source image, and it's going to have a content. So content as well of string, of type string. So over here, and we're going to have a prop of item and it's gonna be type of item. So, and we want to make use of the item over here. So this will be item dot 
dot src and then the title over here too will be item dot title and over here too will be item dot title here will be what item dot content and we want to change the the button we want to actually add space between the button so let's call s sx and then pass on props so we call justify content and we give value of space between so over here again on the buttons we will actually have uh, want to change the column to inherit and we also want to change the variant to outlined so outlined like that and we want to make use of this card so in our home page all right before we create this our home page component let's go ahead and install a library for generating dummy content so open your browser and then search for npn faker so npm faker, this faker j is a library for generating dummy content for our application. So let's copy this command over here. Now we get back to our application and uh, go to this terminal and install the component. So let's see how we can use it. So we can we have to import it first at the top. So we import it over there. So before that, let's go ahead and uh, import, create our component. And inside this our component, we want to have a box element for material UI. And inside the box element, we want to have a container element and we give it max width. The container should have a max width of an extra large, that is XL on larger screen, on extra large screen. So, and um, we also, before that, we want to create dummy data. So let's say const data is equal to, is equal to array dot from, and we want to specify the length of the array. So we want to have 24 items. So, and we map through each item and then structure our data the way we want so our data we wanted to have an id and the id will come from this library that we just imported so it will be faker dot dot um string dot uid so it will generate a unique um, id for us and the next step is to generate title so it will be faker dot dollarm dot dot line dot lines and one and the next one we want to also generate and uh, content so the content is going to be faker dot lorem and this lorem we want it to be sentences and we want to have four sentences we also want to generate image so it will be source and then faker dot image dot image dot URL pixel photos so and we can switch the width and the height so we want the width to be 1200 and the height as well should be 1200 so this is the dummy data we have generated and for and 24 array of an um, object so we want to look through it and display within our application so let's call a grid layout we want this to be in grid layout and the grid the outside grid should be a container with spacing of n2 then and then inside it we can now go ahead and look through our data and display so data dot map and for each item we want to also display a grid item so grid 2 but then and the key should be item dot id and we need to specify the size so we want it the size is going to be an object and on larger screen we want it to be three columns and on wider on, on the medium screen we want it to be four on small screen it should be 12 that is full screen on extra small screen it should be 12 as well so and then we close we close the grid so after that we also want to now display the actual content so in order to display the actual content we need to call our media card that we created the component we created and is expecting a, an item prop so and from there we save close the card so and once we are done with that we can now go ahead and export this uh, home page component so in our index or tss file over here let's go ahead and export this component so that we can use it in our application so and in order to use the components let's go to our page or css and remove everything inside this our page and then uh, we want to actually import our home page over here so home page from components so and um, we remove this other um, files that are not needed so and we save everything so you can see our application is still running so let's go ahead and check it out in the browser so when you come over here you can see application is running but the card are not having the same height so we we'll fix that in a moment and this card is hidden behind this app bar since the position is fixed First of all, let's go inside our component and go to media cards. And then over here, we want our card to have the same height. So in order to do that, let's give it height of 100% over here. So irrespective of the content of the card, all the cards will be the same. So if you navigate back, you will discover that all the cards are having the same height. But then we need to also um, give a part in top or margin top to shift our cards down. So inside our homepage components, 
add a prop on this uh, container element known as an ss and we give it a matching top of nine and padding top of or two so and um from there let's take it out in the browser so you can see there is space now at the top so this is good and fine the next step for us now is to actually implement a toggle button over here at the top for us to be able to manually toggle our uh, toggle between light and dark mode so if you go to this css variable and you come up here you can see toggling dark mode manually so in order to do that we have already configured this and color schemes then we need to make use of this so let's copy this um, import statement and take it to our let's take it to the nav bar so let's close this other component so within our nav within our main nav bar let's paste the import over there and we also need to copy this so let's copy this one to down here but we want to make use of system mode as well so on system mode so and um we actually need to also import some icons some material ui icons here so let's go over here open our browser and search for mui icons so and let's go to the documentation over here we we'll change this to outline and search for dark mode so dark mode icon copy the icon over here paste it over there we also search for light as well so light so light and so we copy this icon as well and uh, drop it here so we need to create a function for toggling our dark mode so let's call const const um, toggle dark theme is equal to use and we use callback over here use callback snippet so and over here let's import use callback hook from react we need to check for mode so if mode then const current mode is equal to if mode is equal to dark then we want to actually if mode is equal to dark then the mode should be changed to one light and then else what dark so from there we now go ahead and set the mode to one to the current mode so this function set mode is gotten from this use color skin hook so look at it over here so but then this our use callback will depend on one the mode and the system mode so then over here we need to actually call this function on a button so all right so let's and um, call this we call this implementation somewhere below this point so before the settings so all right so i want to implement this and um, button over here so our place growth should be one we remove this display none and uh, we will also pass a padding right of um, two so and we want to also have this two tip that we show something so let's wrap these two tip instead of an um, open setting should be toggle team and we will close the two tip we will also change this label over here to toggle team and uh, we'll change this function to actually uh, toggle the function that we created toggle dark team so that is the function that we created at the top over there before we before we check it out you can see this menu icon but we don't want the menu icon to be here so we're going to open we check if mode is equal to dark then we want to actually have um display the dark icon so let's open um dark mode outline icon so else it should be one light mode outline icon so let's save it and check it out in the browser and see so you can see we have our icon over here at the top so when we click on it our light mode we toggle and when we click on it our dark mode we toggle so if we refresh the page in dark mode we not see that flicker that you are flicker so you can see how easy it is to implement this using the css variables so let's also inspect the page and see so if we inspect the page and we come under the tab of styles you will see that our css variable css variables have been generated over here so you can go ahead and use this either in your native css or anywhere within your application so and let's demonstrate how to make use of this and css variable within our application so you will if we open this home page you will notice that we have a box element over here so if for instance we want to change the background of this um, box element we can call ss and then pass an array over there then open a function of thing and then return a function an object so inside the object we can call background color and we can call this theme dot vars dot um, palette dot um, gray we want to change it to gray of what 300 when it is in light mode 
So, and then the reason why we are able to access this virus on thin is because we imported, if you check under our context, we imported this uh, type over here at the top. If we comment it out, it will show us an error. So, if you are dealing with TypeScript, do ensure that you import this type over here somewhere within your application. So, in order to access the virus prop. So, and when we are in dark mode, we want to actually um, call this function dash dash. We spread the the theme and call this applies function. So applies function is asking which and kind of uh, mode do you want to apply this time? Is it in dark or light mode? So we want to apply when it is in dark mode. So we go ahead and pass the prop. So when it's in dark mode, we want to change the background color to gray of what 900 so that it will have that uh, dark background. So let's go ahead and check it out in the browser and see. Over here in the browser, you can see this error. Functions cannot be passed directly to a client component unless. So let's go ahead and fix this error by declaring and um, use client at the top. So this is a client component and the error will go away. So you can see the error is gone. And when we click over here to toggle our team, we can, you can see that we have a dark gray. And when we toggle, we also have a dark gray over there. So this one was, I would say, the kind of light gray. So when we toggle, we have a dark gray. So that's how you can be able to apply this uh, MUI uh, CSS variables. So in both in light and in dark mode. So also we can be able to directly use those generated, those generated and CSS variables anywhere in our CSS files. So I told you when you inspect this, you should be able to see some um, um, CSS variables generated over here. So if you want to make use of any of this, maybe it is just a native component to have a diff. We can go ahead and call style. And if you want to maybe change the background color, we can go ahead and call val function and pass the name of the variable over there. So like that and everything will still work. So and another way you can use it is by using it directly inside our CSS file. So like in this uh, globals.css, if you have a class that you want to pass, maybe you call the class my BG. So you can um, go ahead and maybe you want to change the background color as well. You can go ahead and call the var, the var function and pass the name of that generated CSS variable. So these names are the same that they don't change whether in dark or or light mode so you can call if it is in dark mode the background will be dark and if it's in light mode the background will be light as well so you can use this css variable anyway within your application another thing i want to mention is that if you pass the color skin selector as a class over here ensure that in your in your layout in your layout over here to this init color skin script you pass the attribute class as well so these you go hand in hand so Basically, in this, how we can be able to implement dark and uh, light mode in our Next.js application using Material UI CSS variables without UI flickering. So we have solved that issue of UI flickering. Sometimes when you visit this uh, Material UI um, website and you refresh the page, yeah, you can see that flickering. So, but you can check out our application and there is no that flickering. So you can see the difference. So if you implement it, maybe based on the Material UI documentation, you implemented your dark mode over here, you may be experiencing that flickering or showing if you're in dark mode, it shows in light mode before it will change to dark mode. But with this CSS variable implementation, you don't get to experience that. So thank you guys for sticking around with me to the end of this tutorial. And um, I want to uh, get to 10,000 subscribers. That is my target. So please do me a favor, subscribe to my YouTube channel, like and then share this video with your friends. And um, also, keep my notification turned on for more awesome videos like this. I'm going to be releasing three videos in a week. And um, yeah, see you guys in the next video.